This is the first part of an online training that will get you started with employing Flexibility Redundant Switch, FRS. There will be altogether five parts in the training. Before this video, it is recommended to watch the videos Network Redundancy Protocols, HSR and PRP, and Introduction to Flexibility Redundant Switch. They give some basic information on the subject. This training is intended for those who want to test and implement FRS and already have some basic knowledge of HSR, PRP as well as FRS. In this first part of the training series, I will first quickly go through the basic features of FRS followed by an explanation about the different interfaces. After that, I will talk about the protocol operation protocol messages and node types of HSR and PRP. Next, I will tell about the latency and delay, after which I'll present the HSR PRP supervision in and interfaces. The following parts of the training series will give some insight in the precision time protocol and the choices about node types, interfaces and FPGA technology. First, let's quickly go through the most important features of FRS. As you may already know, FRS is an IP core for FPGA. It is a full wire speed Ethernet switch and supports interface speeds of 10, 100 or 1000 megabits per second in all of the ports. FRS has built-in support for both HSR and PRP. FRS can be used to implement all the red box types defined by HSR and PRP standards. It also has precision time protocol support and transparent clock functionality. The ports are full duplex and packet forwarding is wire speed. FRS can have up to 8 ports. Natively, FRS has MII and GMII interfaces. Other interface options like RGMII and SGMII are implemented using adapters. The amount of Ethernet interfaces is not fixed. FRS can support anything from 3 to 8 ports. More ports mean that FRS consumes more FPGA resources. This influences what size of an FPGA chip the design can fit in. FRS is controlled and configured through registers. Also, the statuses can be read the same way. The registers can be accessed through Avalon switch matrix. We also have an adapter that connects the MDIO to Avalon called MDIO to Avalon Bridge. So, if you want to control FRS through MDIO, you should use the MDIO to Avalon Bridge. Because MDIO is quite slow, we do not recommend using it in new designs. Instead, Avalon can also be accessed, for example, through PCI to Avalon or PCI Express to Avalon Bridge. The time interface of FRS is meant for sharing the clock time information in between FPGA blocks, for example, the clock on FRTC, Flexibilis real-time clock. On top of this, there are naturally also the clock and reset interfaces. Here is an example block diagram of a system with 4-port FRS. Two ports are redundant ports going to the HSR or PRP network. One is an interlink port and the fourth port is going to the external CPU. The PTP protocol stack and HSR PRP supervision run on it. Next I will tell more about how to connect devices not supporting HSR or PRP to HSR PRP network. With HSR the legacy devices are always connected using a red box. 
to PRP network, it is possible to connect legacy devices, but Readbox is the recommended method. This is because the device connected to only local area network A or local area network B cannot communicate to the devices in the other local area network. PRP devices are able to communicate with legacy devices directly because PRP uses trailer and the trailer is ignored by them. On the other hand, HSR uses header and because the header is in front of the packet, the legacy devices do not understand it. The HSR and PRP networks can also be interconnected using HSR PRP red boxes. Here is an example of HSR protocol message. The most important information is the sequence number because HSR compares packets and removes duplicates based on it. The path ID tells from which local area network the packet originated from. It is used in HSR PRP red boxes to prevent forwarding frames back to the original PRP segment. The Ethernet protocol has two types of operation, unicast and multicast. When unicast is used with HSR, the duplicate is removed at the destination. In case of multicast, on the other hand, the duplicate is removed at the source. This means that the traffic sent to one direction can be 100% of the link speed, but then no traffic can be sent to the other direction. This is because the returning traffic of the multicast takes the whole bandwidth also to the other direction. So, if traffic is sent to both directions at the same time, only 50% of the link capacity goes through the HSR ring. Quick removes fetcher solves this problem and is also available for FRS. Quick remove removes the duplicated frame copies from the ring. This means that both copies do not travel the whole ring or network. Only one copy of the packet is enough for the ring ports. Here is, an co here is a comparison of a network with and without quick remove. So far, they are exactly the same. Now look closely. In quick remove, the red and green packets are removed as one copy has already reached all the nodes. In normal HSR, both copies will reach all the nodes, which consumes more network resources. It is also unnecessary because both copies are similar and contain the same data. In QR, the HSR ring ports are similar to HSR interlink ports, so there is only one kind of ports. Quick remove is better because it lessens the average link utilization in the network. HSR and PRP have several different node types. The basic nodes are the DANH, double attached node for HSR, and DANP double attached node for PRP. The other node types include different kind of red boxes. HSR red box connects the HSR network to external non-HSR devices via interlink. PRP red box does the same for PRP. HSR PRP red box connects PRP network to HSR network. HSR HSR red box connects HSR networks to each other and can be used to create, for example, a guard box. Guard box can connect HSR rings to other topology and other topologies together. The delay in an HSR node is caused by two main issues. 
The first one is the forwarding delay, which is the delay caused by node forwarding the frame from input to output. The second reason is the queuing delay that is caused by other traffic. The forwarding delay is the major factor in non-congested network, so if there is low traffic, this is the most important reason for latency. In a congested network, the queuing delay is dominant. The queuing delay can be restricted by using proper prioritization. This means that the more important data gets higher priority and this minimizes the network delay. This helps only if done correctly, since applications must be able to restrict bandwidth used by high priority data. The maximum delay in HSR ring is affected by mainly by three factors. The first one is the ring size. The more there are nodes, the more there is delay. The second is the maximum size of an Ethernet frame. In the worst case, every node has to wait one maximum frame to be received before sending. The third is the link speed. The bigger the link speed, the less the delay. The maximum frame size has been defined in the Ethernet standard, so it can't be changed, but the ring size and link speed can. Here is also an example how the total maximum network delay is calculated for the highest priority data. The number of nodes is multiplied with the maximum size of the frame. One maximum sized frame has 1500 bytes and the bits are counted by multiplying the bytes by 8. The result is divided by the link speed. Let's move on to the HSR PRP supervision protocol. The supervision protocol is meant to maintain the node stable that is defined in the HSR PRP standard. The HSR PRP supervision protocol stack sends, receives and processes HSR PRP supervision protocol frames. The node stable contains information about the node statuses and when the supervision frames from certain nodes have been sent or seen. With the help of the nodes table, it can be seen if some of the devices or links in the network have a malfunction. The Flexibilis implementation of HSR PRP supervision has two different interfaces, control interface and packet interface. Configuration of the supervision protocol can be done through the control interface, as well as acquiring and updating the node stable entries. The packet interface is used for sending and receiving HSR supervision frames. It also provides timers and access to FRS for HSR PRP supervision protocol. In the picture, the blue parts are system specific, the gray one is the common part, and the orange are the control and packet interfaces. The HSR PRP supervision protocol stack is generic and does not use operation system specific function calls. This makes it easily portable to other operating systems. However, the HSR packet library and the control daemon are operation system specific. Therefore, they need to be ported to the OS that is used. The reference design we provide is compatible with NIOS UC OS 2. This is the end of the first part. Please continue with the second one, in which I will tell more about the Precision Time Protocol and the PTP Protocol stack. Thank you for watching.